In this video, I'll be reviewing the Lennox pattern from Love Notions. Hi, it's Megan from Sew and Tell Australia, and in this pattern review, I'm going to be looking at the newly released Lennox pattern from Love Notions. This review is sponsored by The Sewing Corner. Sewing Corner is a place where passion meets community. Join us and unlock unlimited access to exclusive tutorials, sponsor discounts, and expert tips to help take your sewing to the next level. To find out more, check out the details in the description below. I'm a huge fan of the latest pattern release from Love Notions, the Lennox. It is a dress and top in one and it is gorgeous. I'm loving the square neckline. It is constructed a little bit differently to how it would normally be constructed. I'll go through that in my construction tips, but I'm just, I'm a huge fan of a square neckline, particularly for myself. I think showing off my decolletage is very nice. So it got a definite tick from me the minute I saw it in, in testing. So if you're watching this during release week, it is on sale while it's being released. So instead of it being $12.50 US, it comes down to $9.50 US. And if you use my code MEGAN10, you will also get an additional 10% off. The other thing about this week is that it is Love Notion's site-wide 40% off sale. So if you're watching this between May 1st and May 5th, 2023, you can get a massive 40% off all patterns on the website except the Lennox and again if you use that code Megan10 you will get an additional 10% off so make sure you use that code which I'll link below. So to start off with let's take a look at the different options for this one. So it starts with a size range of XS right up to a 5X which is a bust width of 33 inches and it goes all the way up to 57.5 inches. And that's a hip width of 35.5 and it goes all the way up to a 59.5 in the hips. So quite a decent size range. It does also obviously have Love Notions custom full bust adjusted pieces, which I love. I'm a bigger busted woman, so to have those full bust adjusted pieces already done is a huge plus for me, particularly because this is a princess seamed dress as well, a top or dress. Um, I find it a little bit difficult to do those full bust adjusted pieces manually, so to have them pre-done, always a bonus for me. It has two necklines, so it's got a sweetheart neckline, which is a cute little curve to it, and square neckline, which as I mentioned, I love a square neckline. And the construction is just that little bit different. Instead of being fully lined, it is a neckband, but I will go through that in the construction tips. I've got some footage to be able to show you how to get a really nice finish on that neckline, but they do have the two necklines of the sweetheart or the square. It has four different styles, so you can go a midi dress which hits at about calf length, or has this very nice side split, thigh, thigh side split, a bit of a tongue twister. Uh, you can do a knee length dress as well, and then there's a shirt and a crop version. So you can add pockets if you want to. Uh, you would just need to either add them in an inseam or you could use something like the pockets from the Sybil skirt collection, which I'll link in the description below, to add those pockets at the hip line. So it isn't a pattern that comes with pockets, but you can add them if you want to. And I don't know about you, but pockets are a must for me. So there are four different sleeve lengths. You can get a long three quarter short or a short puff. I've actually done the three quarter and the short because I like sort of a, a shorter one. But the three quarter I think is a really good fringe season one as well, where you want that little bit more warmth, but you don't want it long. You know, if you find yourself always pulling your sleeves up, three quarter is a really good option for that. But it's just a really super versatile pattern. There's lots of different options that you can add to this. So the fit of the Lennox is to be fitted across the bust, so it's got negative ease across the bust. Then at the waistline, it goes from a one to sort of a three inch ease. And then out at the hips, you're looking at a zero to one inch ease. So there's a little bit more ease at the waist, which is appreciated, let me tell you. And then there's a little bit of ease in at the hips, but not so much, it is sort of a bit more hugging at the hips. I don't mind that though, I think that's quite good. So you do choose your size based on your high bust measurement. So this measurement up here, and just have a look at those finished measurements to see whether it's going to suit you once it's finished to make sure you're choosing the right options and whether you need to grade or not. 
In terms of where the shirt and dress is supposed to hit, so the shirt is supposed to hit at about the hip length, the crop hits about the natural waistline, and the knee length dress is drafted to hit at the knee and the midi is about mid thigh. That's all based on an average woman height of five, and five foot five inches. So if that's not you, you just need to make sure you adjust accordingly, which Love Notions are really good at showing you the places where it's best to lengthen or shorten your patterns. So keep your eye on those pattern pieces to know where you need to make those adjustments. Now let's take a look at the fabric requirements. So the requirements on this one are recommended a light to medium weight stretch fabric with at least 40% full way stretch. So you'd be looking at things like a rib knit, a cotton lycra, a jersey, an interlock, something like that, just something that's got really good stretch. And if you make sure you've got those, you should be pretty right with how it looks. And there are some really beautiful cotton lycras and rib knits out there. I know especially in Australia, rib knit is huge at the moment, printed rib knit as well. I actually made a version with both a plain navy rib knit, which is what I show you in my construction tips. And then for my promo photos that I took, I used a beautiful First Nations artist artwork by Nikki from Blackbird Designs and it's printed by The Tallery, which is an Australian company. I'll link all these in the comments so you can take a look as well. So the name of my print is actually Daughter Growing Up and it's a really beautiful, beautiful um, print that I really felt drawn to when I was looking at it. So happy to be supporting First Nations artist, which I think is a really beautiful thing in Australia. In terms of fabric requirements or fabric lengths, you need anything from about a one meter up to 2.7 meters. Obviously depends on your options. So for the crop version, you can get away with about a meter, whereas the dress can need up to 2.7 meters. And that's basically because a dress can be quite fabric hungry. So I chose to do the, um, I did a short sleeve shirt and a three quarter sleeve shirt. And I reckon I used probably for the, short sleeve shirt I definitely used a meter or under and the three quarter sleeve top I think I used probably just over a meter I ended up using a scrap from one piece and you know a full length piece from the other so it does just depend on the width of your fabric but for a short, short sleeve uh, for most sizes you can get away with between one and one and a half meters for doing that. Now I'm going to take you through the supplies you need to make this garment. So for the main construction, you will need either a serger or a machine that can do zigzag stitch or a faux overlock. Being knit fabric, you do need something that is going to give a little bit of stretch. If you're just using a straight stitch, you're going to find your stitches are going to pop and it's not going to work very well. So whilst you don't need a serger, it is obviously advantageous. I use my Baby Locker Claim and love it, but any sort of serger will work for this. Now in terms of the neckband, you do need to... Uh, secure it down. So you can either use a cover stitch. I use my baby lock euphoria, love it. Or if you don't have a cover stitch, you can also use a twin needle. So I use Schmetz twin needle. I think they're the best out there. And basically what it is, is two needles coming down from a single shank and most domestic sewing machines are able to use a twin needle. Just check with your brand. But basically it means you can use two rows of stitching and it's got a zigzag at the back to help combine them, which just gives that little bit of extra stretch. So I do recommend top stitching around the neckband as it does help keep it all down. It tells you in the instructions as well, but doing that top stitching is really important because otherwise I don't think it looks as neat. So you can either use the twin needle to top stitch or you can use your cover stitch. Some of the other things I like to use when I am sewing with knits is I like to use clips or pins. I tend to use clips mainly when I'm working with knits. However, I do use pins when I'm sort of marking quarter points and bits and pieces. But in general, I like to use, pin, uh, I like to use clips because they don't mark the fabric like pins can. I do also use a, you can either use either a good pair of fabric scissors or a rotary cutter. I'm a rotary girl because I use a projector, so a good sharp rotary cutter is always important. And I'm a big fan of having a little pair of snips by each machine just so you can snip off any wayward threads. So these are important to me. A couple other things you'll need is obviously a matching thread. I use Rasant thread. I think it's really good quality uh, for all my top stitching. And it is important to use quality thread so that you don't get any 
um, snapped stitches. If you're using poor quality thread in your machines, it can also damage the machine because it's got lint coming off, it's getting caught in tension discs and in your machine. So it's really important to use a good quality thread. And then I also have Taylor's chalk. It's super important to mark the notches on this one. So I've got a really good quality Taylor's chalk as well that just helps mark those notches and doesn't mark the fabric um, in the final garment. It just sort of brushes away easily, but it's able to mark the fabric. Now I'm going to take you through my construction tips and how I think you can get the best Lennox you can make. As I've mentioned previously, there are a couple of little things to watch out for when constructing this one, and they all center around the neckband. So in terms of construction generally, it's quite an easy one to put together. There's the princess seams, so it does have that center panel that you need to work on, but it's really important that you follow the instructions of the pattern in terms of the um, combination of, of how you put the pattern together, as it does make a difference with your neckband. So generally to get a square neckline, you need to fully line the bodice because you can't really use a band to get those nice mitered corners because if you use a band in a square pattern, it generally will just kind of end up circling. So to get a nice squared neckline, you do generally tend to have to fully line your bodice, whereas this one has that nice squared look but it's got the band. The band is done in two separate pieces. So you need to start by putting the top band on the front center panel first. And then when you attach the neck band around the top, it's really important that you've marked those notches and that you follow the instructions of where the notches go. So it should be slightly stretched around the back between the shoulder points. So you've got a little bit of stretch there. And to be honest, I didn't follow that advice when I did my first run in my First Nations print and I did have trouble with it gaping a little bit at the back. So on this second one, I really made sure I followed the instructions and making sure I had just that little bit of stretch uh, between the two shoulder point really made a huge difference in how it sits on me. So you do need to make sure there's a little bit of stretch there and then there's not a lot of stretch between the shoulder points and the bottom of the, and the top of where the center panel sits but it's really important that you leave sort of an inch or so from the bottom of the center panel to where you attach it. So as long as you're doing those things, you then can attach the middle section and finish off the neckband then. And again, one of my biggest construction tips is making sure the bottom of that neckband that goes around the main part of the garment sits at the bottom of the center front panel neckband. So as long as you've got those parts aligned, when you top stitch later, it is gonna get caught. So when you do top stitch around the neckband, it's important to make sure that those two bands are close together. So the bottom of the main band and the bottom of the center panel band. If you've got those two nice and tight and you can add a little bit of uh, double-sided tape if you want to. I added a little bit of double-sided tape to mine just to make sure that it was sticking down really well so that when you then top stitch it either with your cover stitch or twin needle, you are making sure you're catching the bottom of that neckband so that when you wear it, it's gonna look really nice and you should be able to flip it over and have a good look at it like mine anyway. Other than that neckband construction piece, the rest of it comes together really, really easy. You just treat it like a normal t-shirt after that. So I attached my arms, I sewed down my arms, I hemmed it, it looks beautiful. So it is quite an easy garment to construct. I think I probably made mine within about half an hour. And that was from cutting to wearing, basically. It is such an easy garment to put together. Granted, I do have a projector, so I don't have to worry about printing and sticking things together. So I just loaded my pieces up. I graded between an XL and a 2X, cut them all out, sewed it all together, made sure I caught that neckband really nice and clean, and I was able to wear it within sort of half an hour, 45 minutes. So it is quite a quick one to put together once you're confident in knowing what you're doing. Now I'm going to wear my version and show you how it turned out. And let's have a look at mine. 
Here's my final version that I did for the promos in the beautiful daughter growing up from Nikki from Blackbird Designs and it's just such a beautiful fit. I love how the neckline looks. I did have to in this one do a little bit of hand stitching because I did miss the bottom of the neckband. So like I was saying in my construction tips, it's really important that you align the bottom of the neckband to the bottom of your square bit of the front, front center panel. So I didn't do that in my first one. So I did have to do a little bit of hand stitching here, but it does look really good. And like I said, I didn't really read the instructions in terms of making sure I stretched at the back. So it does sit up a little bit, but if I just kind of give a bit of a wriggle, it's fine. In terms of fit, I like how it's negative across the bust. It does have that little bit of ease across the waist. So I'm not feeling like it's really sucking onto my gut or anything. It's feeling good. And then it does come back in at the, at the hips to give that kind of bit more shaping. So I'm quite happy with how it all looks. I mean, I would like to lose a little bit of weight, but that's life. I've grown two beautiful children. So this does make me feel quite comfortable. From the back, it is just a single back piece, sits at the hip line, so it's not, you know, I can bend over and I'm not gonna be showing the top of my pants. So it does look quite nice there. And then like I mentioned from the front, it just sits at that hip line as well. So all in all, I'm really happy with my version. This is the short sleeve version. So very handy, but I did also make a three quarter sleeve version when I did my construction tips on the neckband, which I did in a beautiful navy blue rib. I wouldn't also mind trying a version with the skirt. I think you could very easily mash this with any of the Sybil skirt or, you know, if you did your own circle skirt, you could definitely do that and it would look really cute. Um, but for now, I've got my two top versions, but definitely it is something you could mash with something like the Sybil skirt. So I will pop those links in the, in the details below if you want to purchase those patterns as well. But I just did my shirt and I love it. So I actually changed into my rib knit version for my final thoughts. So you can see I did the three quarter sleeve in this one and it's the same beautiful square neckline. I did catch the bottom of both my neck bands in this one. So it is sitting a bit, a little bit nicer and I didn't have to hand stitch any of it. So make sure if you follow my construction tips, you should get a beautiful finish on your neck band. But in general, I love the Lennox. It's definitely a pattern that I think is gonna be on high rotation in my wardrobe. I've already got two, and like I've mentioned, I wouldn't mind making a dress version with maybe like a half circle skirt. But it's just a really beautiful pattern. Great square neckline without having to have the fabric hungry, fully lined version. And also obviously different sleeve lengths, dress, shirt, crop, the options are endless. So definitely worth grabbing this one while it's on sale during release week and even just in general. So make sure you check out the links in the description below to get yours on sale. Also, don't forget that there is the site-wide 40% off sale if you are watching this between the 1st of May and the 5th of May, 2023. It is 40% off. And if you use code MEGAN10, you will get an additional 10% off your purchases as well. And that goes for the sale price as well. It is on sale for $9.50 US. But if you use your MEGAN10 code, you will get an additional 10% off so I highly recommend you take advantage of those sales as always I hope you found this video helpful I would love if you tagged me in your makes if you decide to buy the Lennox pattern please tag me in your make so that I can gush over your beautiful garment as well I love when people tag me in makes from things they've watched a review of mine on or seen me make on Instagram or Facebook or even TikTok so please make sure you tag me you can find all my social links here and always I'm happy to chat to anyone so you can always jump into the comments or in my DMs. I love connecting with community as well. The last thing I will mention is obviously my membership, The Sewing Corner. It's a great place to connect with like-minded sewers and join in our community. We do a lot of fun things over there. We've got a growing library of tutorials that you can access from full tutorials of how to make patterns, as well as little mini tutorials on how to do different bits and pieces as well. So I highly recommend you check out The Sewing Corner. It's super affordable and a great way to enhance your skills as a sewist. 
please like and subscribe this video. I am so thankful for everybody that watches and joins in and I hope to see you in the sewing corner or on my socials. Thank you.